Okay, so just, just as a recap from the last video, we can now take um, any dimensional analysis problem and break it into just some general steps. So the first step is to determine the necessary equivalent statements that relate the involved units. Like in this one, we found that we wanted to start with dozens of donuts and end up with plain old donuts. And we found the equivalent statement that related them. Then you want to translate the equivalent statements into the correct conversion factors that will cancel unwanted units. Remember, if something is on the top as your units, you want to cancel it by putting it on the bottom with your units then multiply straight across. And I will say, you do not have to put the units with you. You can just kind of cancel them from here. I just did that so that those of you that didn't necessarily remember that mathematically would be able to see. Then double check that your answer has the desired units. Yes, everything canceled, but donuts, which is what we wanted. Then check that your answer has the correct number of sig figs. This is really interesting. Um, this one right here, um, sig figs really aren't applicable because we're just kind of counting. Um, conversion factors are typically exact numbers like we were talking about. One dozen donuts is 12 donuts. I could also say 1.000 dozen donuts is 12.00000 donuts. Okay, so don't worry about sig figs too much when you're just counting, only when you have measurements. And then ask yourself if the answer makes sense. Okay, so I can look back on this and see, okay, I ended up with a bigger number. Does it make sense if I start with two dozens of donuts to end up with a larger number of just plain donuts? Yes, it does. It looks reasonable. And again, most of you probably could do this in your head. You know it's right. Okay, so some new examples, different scenarios. You are making a cake. Maybe I was hungry when I made these notes. You are making a cake and need to measure two cups of flour but you only have a tablespoon measure, okay? How many tablespoons of flour do you need? So in this problem, we wanna start with cups and end up with tablespoons. So our first step is to determine the necessary equivalent statements. That means that we need to figure out the relationship between cups and tablespoons which you might not know this off the top of your head, but could you look it up pretty easily? Yes, yes you could, okay? Um, in case you did not know, one cup is equal to 16 tablespoons, okay? So that is my equivalence factor that I need. Now I've got to start my calculation. What unit am I starting with? I'm starting with cups but that doesn't work with me because I can't actually measure in cups right now. Now I'm gonna use this and convert it into a conversion factor. So think to myself, do I want to do one cup over 16 tablespoons or do I wanna do 16 tablespoons over one cup? Remember, we want our units to cancel. So if I'm starting with cups on top, I want cups on the bottom. So it's going to be one cup right here. And we know in one cup, we have 16 tablespoons, okay? So I can go through now and I can multiply this all out. I know that cups on top will cancel with cups on the bottom and leave me with units of nothing but tablespoons. And right here with my numbers, I have two times 16 divided by one, um, which leaves me with 32. Okay, so your final answer for this one is 32 tablespoons. Okay, not too bad, but a little bit harder figuring out your equivalent statement there, right? Okay. Now, we're really gonna test ourselves, okay? Because things can get a bit more complicated. So what if I know a bunch of random facts? Like, if 94 books equals three shelves, 51 cases equals seven rooms, two cases equals 17 shelves, and one building equals 61 rooms, 
then how many books are there in 13 buildings? Okay, obviously a very crazy kind of example, but this kind of logic that we have is very relevant to what we're about to do for chemistry, okay? So where should I start? What do I need to do? Well, I need to start with buildings because that's the only thing that I'm given and I need to work backwards to books, okay? Is there an equivalent statement given to me up here that directly relates buildings and books? Well, that's books and shelves. That's buildings and rooms, but no, there doesn't seem to be anything that relates books and buildings. So we're stuck, okay? Sometimes you just need to start with what you're given and see where you can go. If I start with 13 buildings, where can I go? What, what do I know that could help me get to a different unit? Because buildings, either way, is not gonna work for me. Well, we know that one building equals 61 rooms. So if I want buildings to cancel with buildings, I need to put that on the bottom. So one building equals Sorry, 61 rooms. Cool. Well, now I've got units of rooms. Where can I go from rooms? I know that seven rooms equal 51 cases. Okay, still not books, but it's somewhere. I'm gonna put seven rooms on the bottom so that it cancels with the units of rooms on top. And it equals 51 cases. Cool, now I've got cases, still not books. We could do better. So what do I know about cases? Two cases equals 17 shelves, sure. Going through a lot here, but it's all relevant. We'll get there eventually, hopefully. Two cases, 17 shelves. And now that I have shelves, can I get back to books? Yes, I can and three shelves. There are 94 books. So buildings cancels with buildings, rooms cancel with rooms, cases cancel with cases, shelves cancel with shelves, and the only unit I'm left with is books, which is what I wanted, okay? So all of that work we just did to end up with plain old books. Okay, now we need to do the actual number. So in, in your calculator, you would need to do something like 13 times 61 times 51 times 17 times 94. And remember not to just go through on your calculator and hit divide and then one times seven times two times three. You either need to hit divide and put all of this multiplied together in parentheses or I think the best way to do it is just to put this in your calculator, get a number, hit enter, clear it, and then go through and do one times seven times two times three, okay? Get a different number, divide them, okay? And then you should get, if you do it correctly, 1,538,762. Sig figs still not relevant because they're not measurements. Okay, they're all, they're all facts. So we would we would do all the digits on that. And again, if you um, did not get uh, this calculation correct, did not put it in your calculator correctly, you need to talk to me, and I'll help you figure it out. Okay.